And uh, she's going to be doing some of her work on UPO paper today, which I think you'll find um, exciting. Um, Sylvia has no boundaries. That's what I hear. She has no boundaries. So please ask her any questions that you might uh, think interesting. Um, I think that's what it's, it's all about. And with that, Sylvia, I'd like to say a big thank you to you for joining today. Thank you, John, for inviting me today and Catherine Ethel and all the Daniel Smith team. I'm very happy to be here and, and to share some of the things that I have done on Jupo. Excellent. Um, Ethel, do you have a, uh, a film that you want to show? Uh, yes, we have a PowerPoint. So Sylvia, I'm going to do a share screen and you can just briefly describe the painting um, to everybody. Let me just share. Something. Okay. Uh, what I wanted it? to show. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What I wanted to show with this is that I don't really work a special subject, but I work in many subjects and in many ways, depends on uh, how I feel that day or what I want to paint. This is this was in uh, in the IWS Art Gallery in Moscow, and then maybe next. Okay, this I made for the Ox Chinese New Year, but it became like a bull, more like an <laughs> like an ox. I I I love the animals and the the way they move. The next, okay, my, my daughter lives in Idaho and when I went to visit her, she took me to a rodeo. It was my first time in a rodeo and I really loved it. So I, when I came back, I decided to paint part of what I see, what I felt in that time. Next. Okay, roosters uh, is one subject that I have been painting for a long time because I really like the way that, that you can put a lot of colors and a lot of different strokes and textures. Um, this was my last one. Next. If you have any questions, please just ask. Yes, Sylvia, I was wondering, we've seen uh, some nice dark color. Uh, what are we seeing? Is that a neutral tint or is that a black? It's a, I like the lunar black. Very much because of the, it, it's very dark, but also for the textures, the granulation. I see also that you have very subtle nuanced colors at the feet of the rooster. Um, can you say about the technique used to get the nuance uh, at the foot of the rooster? It's the, diffused. The, uh, I, I just put some uh, at the foot, uh, some salt and, and very with a lot of, uh, wa uh, of water. Okay, next. Uh, the, the flowers are also one of the things that I love to paint. Uh, I, I don't like to paint like each flower with all the details, but more something like this. Always a uh, moving. Okay, the next one. Sylvia, what kind of uh, paper are we looking at? Uh, I use arches, 140 pounds. Hat press. I, I like to work with no texture. These are the birds of paradise that we have a lot in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. The next one. This I, I like, this is from the imagination. I just like to, to paint a lot uh, with transparent colors, but then like the, the black, very dark to, to this kind of mixes I like to do. Okay, the next one. 
Okay, this was from imagination also. And um, this one, the first, uh, first prize in Albania. Uh, Silvia, how, how, you, how, how you achieve this uh, strong uh, blacks in your paints? Uh, I, I put a lot of pigment, but I also use this, the, the, the lunar black, I, I love it. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. May I ask, how do you get a large volume of pigment on the UPO so that it doesn't crack and become brittle and fall off? In the UPO? Yes. Uh, if you put a lot of pigment, uh, it will stay like that. The, um, this, this, this one's the one that you are looking at. They are on paper, not on Jupo. Mm. This won the first prize also in Malas Malaysia. See, I, I like the. Are you mixing on the paper or the palette? No, on the, on the, usually I mix on the paper. I, I take the, almost the pigment as it comes from the tube. May mm -hmm. I ask on your last slide that you showed, was, is that an imaginary? Not that one, the it, one before this one. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. Beautiful. They are, I, I usually paint on my studio and not really a uh, cleaner. Yeah. So most of them are maybe things that I see and stay in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just do my own interpretation. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is a, a beach in Costa Rica that I, I was looking at and, and I love the, the sky when it gets dark. What are, um, the, what are the subjects that are inspiring you? Is that your beautiful nature? <laughs> yes, almost all the time is the nature and the, the, all the nature in Costa Rica, yes. <laughs> okay, it gives you the energy. Yes. <laughs> and the, about the, the, the mountains and the textures and in Costa Rica, I can say that it's a very green country. I know. <laughs> Next one. Do you like to leave the interpretation to the viewer? Yes, yes. I think it's important not to say everything, but uh, the, the, so the viewer can, can make his own interpretation. I like that. Okay, this is, I also, I'm a glass artist. So in this one, I made the two versions. The small one is the watercolor oh, and the big yeah. one is the glass. I, I started with the watercolor and then I did in glass. Here it was the same. It, it changes a little from watercolor to glass, but I start with the watercolor and then did my own version in glass. Okay, this one was uh, published in a, the International Watercolor Magazine. This uh, is very important also for me because it won the first prize in the India Biennale. This it was, this is a, a watercolor that was in the National Watercolor Museum of Mexico and was the best of show. So now it's part of the collection of the museum. This, uh, this I really love this one because I, I got an award from the National Watercolor Society and I almost couldn't believe that and, and when I got it, I went to California for the opening reception. And I met there 
a lot of great artists. This won the, the first prize in Indonesia, in the abstract category. Okay, this is sometimes I, I just want to put just a few things and textures. So as you can see, uh, this is completely different maybe from, from others that have more information, but sometimes I like to, to paint just like this. Or like this, this, now, this is now in an exhibition in Costa Rica in a museum. Okay, Sylvia. Can you yes. go back to that previous one? That's not lunar black. What did you use there? Uh, I used the, uh, oh my God. I, I will tell you in a few minutes because I don't remember the <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> I don't know all the names. <laughs> Uh, this is on Jupo, this watercolor on Jupo. This is what we will do today. Cool. This is, this was lamp, lamp black. The black that you asked me. Yes, that one. <laughs> Sylvia, do you plan your Thank you. uh, paintings? Do you plan your it, paintings? I, I usually have something in mind. Sometimes they come out completely different from what I plan, but I usually have them in mind, yes. <coughs> what I'm going Hello. to do, I don't do, uh, I don't do a perfect drawing before, but sometimes I do some lines. Mm -hmm. That's our last image, Sylvia. So I'm going to stop share now and back on. Okay. It's a beautiful body of work. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, this uh, the Jupo paper is, uh, I have been trying to do many things because I like the, I like that I can give shape and I can take watercolor out of the frame and I can just uh, get on the wall, on the wall, just like this. Usually, the the watercolor artist, uh, if we send up a watercolor to some biennale or or competition, they give us the size, and 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 it it cuts our wings. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> I would love if we had more freedom in that in that subject. So everybody, you can ask, as you have been doing on Zoom, you can ask um, Sylvia directly. And then on Facebook, if you have questions, I will relay those to Sylvia. Um, your work is absolutely beautiful. Very beautiful. Thank you so much. You know, I, I, I really love Daniel Smith because, because you give us many products to to an opportunities to work as rounds on, on different materials and the watercolor sticks and the granulation and and of course the the, the different colors that you have um sylvia if you'd like to is it all right if we ask you questions when you're painting will that disturb you Oh, no, no, I, I, I will be glad to answer the questions. Okay. Um, so I heard when the, you were asking questions that you paint from your imagination as well. Do you also do um, from photographs or um, what other, what other gives you inspiration? So uh, most of the time I, I take photographs in many places, but sometimes I just keep things in my mind. And sometimes if I like something, I just like to sit down and, you know, just to have the feeling, maybe the sounds, the smell, and, and sometimes I make sketches or sometimes not. How long does it take you to, I know it's a, it's a general question, but it's asked quite a few times, 
Um, how long in general does it take you to finish a painting? Well, it depends, but it, sometimes 15 minutes and sometimes maybe two or three hours. <laughs> because I, I like to be very spontaneous when I paint and, 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 and sometimes the, when it's fast, it's, it's more, it's genuine, more genuine. Do you use any type of a fixer when you paint on Yupo paper? Uh, sorry, can do you repeat? Do you use any type of a fixative when you paint on Yupo paper? A fix, uh, if I use fixative, sometimes, sometimes, okay. yes. Yes. And within your work, do you use a uh, masking fluid of any type for skit? Yes, uh, not all the time, but uh, I like sometimes in some details, uh, in some paintings more, and some other times I use less. But, but I think it's a great uh, way to, to keep the whites. Um, John, I think Andrea raised her hand a while ago. Um, Andrea, do you have questions for? Yes. Okay, go ahead, please. I wanted to. Sorry, I would like to know if the um, paintings are framed or do they, uh, are they like behind you on the wall? <laughs> no, the, I'm now in my studio, so I usually put all the frames on the wall so I can see them. Uh, sometimes when you have them like that, I can see if they need something else or if they are finished. So all my walls are uh, full of, of watercolors, <laughs> they are not framed. Thank uh -huh. you. And the 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 Yupo is the one that I don't put any frame on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, I have I have here one Yupo that I use granulate granulation granulated the, the lunar black, uh, and it works great. And I just put it like this. I don't know if you can see. Oh, beautiful. And it, it looks very nice that you put like this. That was your pose? So, yes, that's your pose and the, the lunar black. I love lunar black, it's wonderful. And sometimes, for example, I do things like this, like this notebook. <laughs> Sometimes I like the story oh, to go wow. out of the book. <laughs> That's cool. Yes. And so, um, Celia, a question that's asked by um, Sandra is, do you, do you use a limited palette once you have chosen what you're going to do? Uh, like three well, or four times. I think uh, I have my favorite colors. But I love to try new ones also. And, and I, I usually have the same colors in the palette. Yes, but, but maybe if I'm painting, then I decided that, for example, I'm painting something black at the end, I decided I will put something red. So it's not something that I planned before. And mm -hmm. Trish asked a question. Trish's question is, um, what type of fixative do you use on UPO? Uh, I, I use the, the acrylic, uh, the varnish in spray. Okay. Good. Orange. Okay. So I, I will uh, show you also some of the things that I have done with the with the ground, the like this one, for example that I put the, the ground on the, how do you call this carton? carton. Cardboard? Cardboard, yes. Because I, I always like to do, to, to try new things. This, this is also a, a, a rooster, but with a sticks and it's on Jupo. And the sticks work very nice on Jupo. Okay. Um, Sylvia, if you want to, Sylvia, if you want to start, 
you can go ahead and start. I want to make sure we're giving you as much time as possible. We'll just keep on asking you questions if that's okay. Okay, yes, sure. Okay, I, I will start with this, with this brush that it's a very old brush, but it's like my magic brush. Show us the magic. Yes. <laughs> Can you see? Yes. Oh, yes. Can you explain to us what happened to your paper? It, it, the, in the Jupo paper, it doesn't absorb so much. So it runs more than in the in the regular watercolor paper. So are you starting with the UPO paper being wet or is it dry? It's dry. Okay. Did you punch holes in your paper? Yes, I I give. I gave shape to the Jupo paper with the with this heat gun. That's that's how I give shape, and then the holes is uh, with a with a candle. <laughs> What's the special thing of Jupo paper? What <laughs> makes it so special for you? Yes, I I, I like it. I like the the fact that I can give the shape. Okay. And I don't need the frame. I like that. <laughs> May I encourage you to mention uh, that if uh, a not an amateur is copying this technique, that they make sure they have good ventilation when heating the UPO, so that they don't inhale the fumes. Uh, it it's it doesn't uh, I I haven't felt any like fumes. It's 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 really that that you start doing that and it's very quickly. I also I always do it in my studio and no problem with that. And have you started this painting with a um, thought in mind? Yes, I like to paint the flowers. Uh huh. Thank you. Sylvia, is your is your um, uh, is the uh, are you on elevated or are you painting flat? Usually, it goes. Now I'm painting flat. And then I just I'm just moving the paper so the water runs. But something I like about the jupe also is that if you if I don't like something, for example, okay, let me paint something before. Let's say. I did this and I don't like it. So I just take the sponge and, and do like this. <laughs> and take it up. You cannot do that with a paper. No. Also, I can put some alcohol and it will give another texture. Angela, thank you so much for putting the names of the color that she has in the chat. But do you have a favorite color, Sylvia? 
Yes, my favorite color is red. I'm good. <laughs> Especially if it's uh, like this pyrrole red. I love that one. Me too. <laughs> I know John. John favorite color is a uh, ultramarine. Ultramarine. Yes. yes. That's why I have this this ring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember you gave a, a necklace to Catherine that she wears. <laughs> yes. So Sylvia does glass, she does Yupo, she does textiles. Um, as you can see, she really is fearless. <laughs> Sylvia, can you uh, layer with Yupo? Yes, you have to wait until it's dry and, and you can do it, but very uh, light because if not, the color will come out. Okay. This is another magic tool. <laughs> oh, cool. So, so Lorena has a question, says, I can see you're good at drawing realistic style. How did you manage to, to switch to abstract? It's so difficult. <laughs> I think you have to start looking at the things more like shapes and, and, and try to synthesize. Is, is that a correct word? And then when you do that, you, start, you, you can start to think more abstract things. Sylvia, how young were you when you were exposed to art? Uh, I, I started studying architecture, but at the same time, I, I started painting watercolor. And since maybe I was 19, and since the first day, I really got in love with this technique. And since then, I have been painting. With the Juco, it's very difficult to show all the process because it takes a long time to dry. So Sylvia, if you, when you enter uh, paintings like the one you're now showing us that is uh, mangled, uh, how do you, how does the society uh, have you mount it or how do you present it? You don't just stick it up on the wall with masking tape, I'm sure. How does that go? <laughs> oh, I put some, uh, some, rings. Rings. some rings, rings in the back. Rings in the back. So you just can hang on the wall. And I also sometimes do uh, murals. I, I take the five or six or even uh, ten 
of this beautiful paper and put them together. And they look very nice. This is what I used to put in the back. Okay. How do you stick them onto the paper with tape or glue? I guess it must be glue. With the, yes, with the silicone. Yeah. Sylvia, do you conduct uh, um, workshops? Yes, sometimes in Costa Rica. And well, next year I'm invited to, to give a workshop in, in Spain with Angela Barbie. And, and I'm invited to go to France also for a three day workshop. And uh, I have, I have given workshops in Miami, in Portugal. And can people not, find not, you on your, on your Instagram not online, account? Or? Not, not online workshops, but I prefer, the, you know, the, to be there. <laughs> When you use the sticks on the UPO, do you dip them in the water first or use them dry? How do you like to use the? No, the sticks, they have to, they, it has to be wet. Not if, the, if, the, if they don't work okay with, if it's not wet. Sometimes I use also soap. This is hand, hand soap. Mm. You're using the soap to make texture or to make bubbles? It, it makes lines and textures. And Beautiful. I'm always looking for for new things to put on my paintings. I Sylvia, how do you know when one of your artworks is done? Well, that's that's why I, I love to I like to, to hang them on the wall because I think it's important to look at them and just to sometimes I feel it's done at the moment, but then after looking, maybe after two or three days, I decided that it needs something more. What kind of brushes do you like to use, Sylvia? This is this is a brush from Skoda, from Alvaro Castanet's collection. And then I like this one is from the Michael Solovjev collection. It's a, a goat. This is my favorite for many years. From Skoda, you can see how it how it looks. This is a syn synthetic like, uh, brush. Yes, synthetic brush, and oh. I like the the Chinese uh, this kind of brush. A magic brush. But the magic brush. <laughs> Thank you. 
See after after the the water starts working, it starts doing a lot of different textures and things. So a little more about the soap. Uh, does it? Do you notice if the soap helps it uh, evaporate faster or slower? No, usually it's some almost the same. Usually it's almost the same, the same time. I don't know if you can see from there all the textures and things that, that the Jupo is doing. Yes, we can see it's very beautiful. Whatever you're using for a camera, it uh, has great quality. Okay, how long does it take for the painting to dry once you're once you once you're finished? Uh, sometimes I I I leave it there for maybe two or three hours. But in Costa Rica is very humid. I don't know if in, in other places it will be faster. Do you use white? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes I use white, not on Jupo, because on Jupo, if you don't like something, you just clean it. But on paper, I do. I think it's, why not? When I started painting watercolor, the, then the, they told me no white, no black. And, and I think, why not? Uh, I don't use too much. I, I prefer to leave the, the paper a white but but for uh, some details i think it's great Sylvia, do you work on more than one painting at a time or just uh, one? No, one at a time. <laughs> well, I can, sometimes I, almost all the time I start a watercolor and I finish. But sometimes I leave it there and maybe I, I, I go to work in another thing. But, but watercolors at two at the same time, no. Only if I'm painting like three watercolors that are going to be together, uh, then I, I put the three at the same time. It's coming very beautiful. <laughs> Regards from Kosovo, it's me, Besnik. Oh, how are you, Besnik? Just fine. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, Sylvia, I have a question for you. After after finishing uh, painting in Yupo paper, you leave it like that, or you do some special coating at the end? Yeah, I, I leave it like that, and when it's dry, I put some varnish in spray. Acrylic. I have one. Okay, thank you. Because if not, the jupo, you just, if, if you don't put varnish, you just clean it with uh, water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Just thank go you. on. It, it's coming very nice, huh? <laughs> thank you. Uh, 
I love your work, so I'm happy that you can say, that you're telling me that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Okay, with this, I think I will just leave it like this. And when it's dry, if it needs something else, I will do. But I need to leave it to dry. Tell me if you have any more questions or you want to know something else. Did you use um, the Aussie red gold in your color? Uh, this is a pyro uh -huh. scarlet. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sylvia, Sylvia uh, what do you think about the 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 size of the paper in in the case of uh, Jupo paper? It's uh, do you feel that a bigger size? It's uh, it's easy to to uh, work to work. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I uh, sometimes I work bigger than this, and, and and I think it's almost the same the same thing. Oh, I really like to, to work big because I I like big brushes. Uh, and, Maybe um, yeah. So yes? yeah, do you always stand when you paint? Yes. And uh, the, the best, what I like the most is to paint on the floor. Oh. But I, I, I always stand. It's, it's difficult for me to paint, you know, sitting down. And sometimes, uh, sometimes it's flat, but sometimes uh, I put something in the back so, it's, it's, so it can run the, the painting. So what size paper, what size UPO paper is that that you just finished? This is a 50 by 66 centimeters. We use centimeters. The, the paper comes in 26 by 40 inches and I just cut it in half. Sylvia, could you also, someone has asked um, Angela um, a painting on paper. Could you actually just take one of your works behind you that's on paper and, and show us kind of what that looks like? That way people can see the UPO that you've just finished and then one behind you that's on paper. That, sure. Well, for example, this, I don't know if you can see, it's in UPO also, but, but I kept it flat. <laughs> this this for example is on paper. Can you see? Yes. Uh -huh. That's very this nice. Paper. And sometimes, for example, this. I did this on paper, but then I cut the paper <sighs> because I wanted I wanted to, to to look a little bit different. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and I think I this I like this to do some to, to try new things. And did you, you use did you use hot press paper? Yes, hot press hot press paper because I prefer no texture. This is our watercolor on on clay oh, with wow. a with the ground. With the ground. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is nice. I think that the ground has a lot of possibilities for the for the watercolor artist, you know, to try new materials. I agree. 
Mm-hmm. What uh, was the su- what was the substrate on the one you just held up that's turned? What what is that? Is that cardboard or it was clay. on the back or it was clay. did you it's stiffen paper. that? It's paper. Clay. Oh, paper. Clay. I- I use a uh, arches 140 pounds, a uh, hot press watercolor paper. That's the one that I like. But then it's on clay. Okay. Ah, the last one on clay. I'm sorry. It's clay with ground. <laughs> yes, I think I, I, I would like to try a lot of more things with the ground because it, I think so many things that we can do. With that I also paint sometimes on. Uh, I try some on wood, and I will try on glass to see how it works. I love and, the I love the movement of the um, the cowboy on the horse. I love the way that you show movement in that in that painting. It's really awesome. I know it's because it, it, the rodeos are like that. I think with a lot of things happening. Really awesome. I really enjoy a lot the, the rodeo in the United States. It looks so much better than the Idaho cowboy. You made it look uh, amazing. It looks like a amazing movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I think with the with the lunar black, it, it's great for doing the, this kind of thing because it runs very nicely. The color. Did you let it dry uh, sideways? How, uh, I notice you lay it, your paintings flat and then you're moving them as you're painting them uh, with the Yupo. Did you do the same thing with the, uh, the, the cowboy? Yes, I was. Uh, I let it dry, it ran, but then I put it flat until it dries. I don't leave it like that. I let it run a little, but not all the way. Thank you. It would be very interesting if if we make like an artist meeting, everybody painting at the same time, maybe the same picture or something. (laughs) To see the interpretation of, of each artist, how different it could be. I think we're going to put that on the list. That's a really good idea. <laughs> that's a really good idea. <laughs> because that's that's nice how how we see the things different from one to another. Yes. Sylvia, do you ever use a um, a hair dryer to uh, dry the paint on the Yupo, or always natural? It's natural, but. But I, of course, I use it sometimes when, like, when you are doing a demo or something that you need to to dry faster, and then I do I use it. But uh, here in my studio, I almost all the time I just leave it to dry by itself. But it's a great a great uh, <laughs> tool for the watercolor artist, the the hair dryer. So, so the one thing that. Yeah. Go I'm ahead. sorry. No, please go ahead. Uh, Sylvia, how do you mount the Yupo paper on the frame? Uh, like, like you show us before, the a black one that was mounted on the, uh, on the frame. I just, I just took it to a place where they frame the, okay, the paintings, and I just told them what I wanted, and they put it in the, on the wood. Thank you. But probably with, I don't think it can be, it will be too difficult to do it. Yeah, uh, and the color that you put uh, outside the, in the, the, en las partes laterales del, uh-huh. del mar. Ajá, eso lo pintaste tú? Did, did you paint that, the, the, side, the sides of the frame? No. No, I took it to a place and they did it. I took only the jupo and they did it all the job. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. It looks very nice. I yeah. 
several like that, and they, they look very nice with that. Uh, it's not a frame, but I don't know how to call it. <laughs> Sylvia, could you show us one of your palettes? Sure. Let me see. Maybe you can. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> or maybe like this. I would put it like this. Oh, yeah. We can see that. Very interesting. How, how do you have your palette set? Is it warm? Well, Is it cool? Yes. Well, I use here yellow, red, and, and always here the blue. And always here I put the, the more like the quinacridone gold and quinacridone sienna. Very cool. I love those brushes. <laughs> It's nice when you can see the, the, the palette from each artist because we change so much. <laughs> so one of the questions that was asked, and I, and I, and I feel to, to, to pass it forward to you, um, how much water do you actually use? Because we, we, I know that the UPO paper um, is not absorbent. Um, how much water do you actually use when you're doing that the painting? Because that must have been something that you learned over time how to do. <laughs> usually I usually I paint a, I don't wear the paper but I put the, the the pigment and at the same time I add water but on the paper mm -hmm. not not on the not I don't mix on the palette I usually put several photos in the same brush Because I like the way they look. Some, sometimes I wet the paper, but not all the time. Like for example, with this, with this one, this is this red sky. The with that one, it was I wet the paper before because I wanted to run. How do you, it's, it's um, interesting that the, the tools that are available, in your mind, what makes you um, choose UPO over um, traditional uh, paper? Um, I know you do both, but w w kind of when do you choose which one you're gonna go with? Almost all the time I paint on paper. Okay. But with the Jupo, it's I like the Jupo because I have been trying to do different things. That's why I like the Jupo. I think it, it gives some other possibilities to work with, and 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 I like the results also. But but I love the the paper. <laughs> I've seen the UPO done just as a plain UPO sheet. I like how you add three dimensions to it and you put the holes from the candles to make it absolutely different than, you know, it's, it's, it's just a whole different way of looking at it, different perspective. It's really quite beautiful. Yes, it's because I think they, if you do like this, it's like they come out of the wall, like a little bit like a, a sculpture. Yeah. So. Um, no, please go ahead. And it gives you the chance to have like sculpture with watercolor because when people think in watercolor, things in paper. And why? <laughs> we can work in, in other ways also. Oh, you can even work on clay. That was actually quite, quite beautiful too. <laughs> the, the painting on the clay. Um, Veronica, um, at, Veronique asked a question, which is um, on the painting that we're looking at on your desktop, how how much more additional do you see that, uh, before that is complete in your mind? Okay, I, in this one, I now I, I was looking at and I didn't like these lines. That's cool. 
So probably I will change that. And some of this will take off. This I don't like. The paint's still damp, yeah. The paint's still wet. Sylvia, do you see a, 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 the image that we're looking at is very vibrant. Do you see any change in the vibrancy between being wet and, and it finally drying on the UPO paper? Yes, when it dries, it's, it's a little bit, uh, the, the, you can see the color lighter maybe, but not too much. And on the clay, was the clay uh, a piece that you made, or was it a clay? Was it a uh, something that was purchased and then you used? No, I made the I made the piece. It's <laughs> it's not really a, a big deal the piece. <laughs> I just wanted to try it. I just wanted to try the 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 ground. But yes, I made it. Sylvia, do you use any tiny brushes? <laughs> no. <laughs> I use, yes, I use some, like for example, this one. This one. Very nice. It's it's from a uh, Michael Solovjev collection. So one more question about the soap. So you use the hand soap, but have you ever used the dish soap for painting? No, but you're giving me a good idea. I will try. <laughs> maybe, maybe it works great. I might and have to soap. try the dish soap so I can write it off of my taxes. <laughs> can you repeat that? I said, maybe I'll try the dish soap so I can write it off on my taxes. <laughs> if you if you try the, the dish, so let me know. <laughs> yeah. So Sylvia, will you be Sylvia, will you be able to uh, post to Facebook the final the final um, image yes when it's finished i will post it on facebook or it. on instagram yes okay that'd be fantastic so um we're getting toward the bottom of the hour anybody on zoom do you have any additional questions for sylvia who's more than just uh painting on paper um, does yupo and she does clay does fabric so she's wide range of of interest that you can ask about. <laughs> Elvia. Yes. yes. Um, and you told us that you make uh, several workshops, yes? In Portugal, in Spain, Miami, whatever. Workshops, right? Yes. Which, yes. All right. 
and after you told us that, it, in, for example, in Costa Rica, the moisture environment affects about the, how to dry the paint. Right? In, in Costa Rica, can you repeat that? The moisture, the moisture, the humidity, moisture. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Right? Uh -huh. Then, uh -huh. have you ever detect, uh, have you ever observed, for example, I don't know, difference how to paint, for example, in the highest places? For example, Nicolas Lopez lives in Peru. Peru is very highest. I don't know if this affect, uh, obviously, uh, about the relative humidity in order to observe best results. For example, yes. the coast. It, it, you have to paint different. For example, last week we went to Mexico and we were painting. And the, if I wet the paper, I dry and it dries so quickly. Oh. <laughs> Here with the humidity, it takes a long time to dry. Long time. Right. So if you are painting, if you want to paint wet and wet, or with the or dry on wet or whatever, but if the wet if the paper is wet, then when you are in a place where you don't have this humidity, you have to, to work very fast. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, I agree with you. So you have to learn how to how to work <laughs> faster. <laughs> yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Silvia, oh, Silvia, another question. Yes. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, no. Do you do you enjoy painting in plein air, or or do you have a special feeling about that, or or not too much? I I enjoy a lot painting plein air because usually you go with friends and and it's very fun. We you have a lot of fun when you do that. But I prefer to do it in my studio. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm more like a studio artist. <laughs> yes, I, under I understand. Because you don't have to carry everything around. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but it's but it's very nice to go with friends and to yeah. paint air, and I I enjoy that a lot also. Fabia, could you show the painting behind you, the flowers in the vase, to to us one more time? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh -huh. Awesome. It oh makes me God. think of the glass of beer being pushed down the bar. Oh, yeah. At a bar, you know, push the beer <laughs> yeah. down to the end of the bar. <laughs> push the flowers. Like a lot of weed in the house. <laughs> I think we would call that a saloon. A saloon. <laughs> Sylvia, thank you so much for joining today. And thank you for you know, showing us um, something different that not everybody has used, which is the Yupo paper. Thank you so much. Your artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, John, and thank you for inviting me and for all the people that is joining us today and also for all the questions because uh, the questions are important to learn also. Yes. So it was, I really had a very good time with you sharing some of the things that I have done. And I, I would love to keep doing new things. Well, I think I'm going to take your, your lead and invite many of the artists to come back and, and, of course, all the viewers and do a common subject so we can see the different perspectives that people take. I think that's a phenomenal idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. We have so many things to share. 
And so Sylvia and will be posting the finished, so the finished um, artwork. Go ahead. Also, I would like to, to congratulate you. How to say congratulations? Congratulations for these programs because I have been watching them every Friday and so many good artists showing their work and, and this, their secrets and uh, a lot of things to learn. You have so, all been wonderful in giving different perspectives. I, I, I um, uh, just love the way that you're so willing to share. Um, I think uh, sharing allows us all to grow. So I, I appreciate what you and, and the other artists have brought to the table so much. Thank you really so much. <laughs> So with that, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining today. It's great to see all of you. Um, thank you, Sylvia. And thank you, thank you John. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank, thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you. 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 Thank you